This is my beginning algebra course. Today you're going to take part two of the final test. If you fail this test, then all the time and the energy that I put into writing the test is going to be a waste. So please do not take this test unless you've done all the homework leading up to the test completely and correctly and you uh, studied for the test. The test is, this second part is worth 100 points. The first part was of the final test was worth 100, and this part is also worth 100 for a total of 200 points for the whole final uh, exam. And uh, this part two, at, at, at the same as part one, part two has 20, 25 questions, and each question is worth four points. Please understand you are going to need graphing paper for this uh, second part of the final test. So get graphing paper ready. Also, I want to mention that for some of these problems, there's going to be extraneous solutions. Now remember, an extraneous solution is produced by the algebra when you try to solve the equation, but when you plug the uh, solution back in to the equation, it doesn't work. So it appears to be a solution, but it's not really a solution. If you include an extraneous solution as part of your answers, then I'm going to have you subtract one-fourth of the points for that particular problem for every extraneous solution that you write. Also, uh, there are going to be word problems on this test that require systems of equations. Every time that you do a word problem that requires a system of equations, I want you to define your variables. You see this says A equals a number of apples and B equals a number of bananas. I want you to do this in every word problem that requires a system of equations because you can't just write variables without telling your, the reader what the variables represent in word problems. So if you don't do this, if you don't show uh, what each variable represents, then I'm going to have you subtract one-fourth of the points uh, for each one of those problems. And this, the problems that uh, require systems of equations and word, word problems, they're all worth four points. So if you don't do this, you're going to have to subtract one point for each one of those problems where you don't do that. Also, uh, when uh, in some of the equations, you're going to end up with uh, a situation where you have the root of 5 over 6, for example. And I'm going to require you to rationalize the denominators. If you don't rationalize those denominators, then you're going to lose one-fourth of the points uh, for that particular problem. So rationalize those denominators. And, of course, what that means is you can't write your answer as 5 over 6, and you can't write it as root 5 over root 6. Or if you have uh, 9 over root 2, you can't write it like that uh, because there are roots in the denominators. You have to rationalize those denominators or, or else you're going to lose one-fourth of the points. Also, uh, as usual... Uh, as in this part one of the exam, whenever you graph, I want you to label the points that you that you use to graph the line. I also want you to label axes, um, and I want you to label the intervals of the graph. Uh, if you don't label axes, subtract one fourth of the points for that problem. If you don't label the points, subtract one fourth of the, of the points for that problem. And if you don't label the intervals, subtract one fourth of the points for that problem. So you're going to lose a lot of points if you don't do these things. Again, this is just this is just the way the academic system works. Here, this is the way that uh, math teachers operate. If you don't do these things, they just love to take off points. So you need to get used to doing these things in uh, my courses. So uh, that said, you're uh, you're ready to take the the exam, and uh, so go ahead and clear everything off your desk, and you should only have a pencil and paper, a graphing paper, uh, and you can have a timer. Uh, if you're using a digital notebook, you can use a digital notebook, but don't don't go on the internet, don't look at your notes. You need to do this on your own without any help from anything. No textbook, no, no people helping you. The test should take between one and two hours. This test is going to be a little bit more difficult than part one, I believe. Go ahead and take the test. As you can see, uh, and I, I have to show you the test, uh, but as you can see, you have the, the, the rules here for grading your paper. So go ahead and take a screenshot of this. You can, you can look at these rules as you take the test. That's okay. So have these rules in front of you. Not everything that I mentioned is on this, on this sheet, so keep in mind the extraneous solutions and, 
and rationalizing your denominators and uh, defining variables and and so on and so forth. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the test. Get a screenshot of the first two pages of the test and a screenshot of the third and fourth page and a screenshot of the last page and so go ahead and take the test pause the video and when you come back I'll uh, talk about how to grade your test so I'll see you when you come back. All right, we're back. Let's look at the answers. Here's the answers for part two of the final test. Go ahead and get a screenshot of those answers. And get a screenshot of the last page here. So now I'm going to go over how to uh, degrade the test. Um, notice that there are two possible answers here. You can write this expression, or you can write this expression. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, my computer's running a little slow here. Sorry about that. Uh, notice you can write... Uh, a mixed number or you can write an improper fraction on that that problem either either answer is correct um, again you can write slope intercept form for this problem or you can write point slope form either answer is correct and notice that there are different ways to write uh, the the equation of the line here you can write it as negative 1 4 x or you can write it as negative x over 4 it's the same thing you should be aware of that by now um, let's see here. What else do we have? Again, you can write improper an improper fraction, or you can write a mixed number. Either solution is correct. Um, if you didn't write, if 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 you didn't write no solution, then uh, subtract uh, half the points for that part of the problem. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This problem is uh, a two-part problem. So this part is worth two points, and this part is worth two points. So if you didn't write no solution for part A, that means you have to subtract half of the points for this part. But since that part is only one of two parts, this part is worth two points. So if you subtract half of the points, you're going to subtract one point if you didn't write no solution. Um, and also, if you included this answer as one of one of the uh, solutions for the equation on part B, then you need to subtract uh, one fourth of the points for that problem. So one fourth of the points for this second part would be one half of a point because again, there, this part each part is worth two points. So one fourth of two would be one half. So this is a solution. This is not a solution because when you plug it in it doesn't work and let's just see why it doesn't work well you can figure out for yourself why it doesn't work we already talked about that um, you need to write plus or minus okay um, if you didn't write plus or minus then subtract uh, one-fourth of the points uh, for that for that uh, problem so one-fourth of the points for that problem would be one point. Subtract one point for that problem. For your graph on number 13, you need to show uh, uh, late label axes. You need to uh, write, the, write the answer, of course. If you didn't write the answer, subtract uh, two points. You can show the answer here as a coordinate, or you can show it here. You don't have to sh do both of those. Um, you need to label all the, the points you use to uh, graph the equation. If you didn't do that, subtract one-fourth of the points for that part of the problem. So that would be, it's a two-part problem, so that one-fourth of the points, again, would be uh, one-half point. And if you didn't uh, 
Well, since you're using graphing paper, you don't really need to label the, the intervals. I'm just going to assume that each box is one unit. Um, give yourself full credit, so a total of two points if you showed your work and it's nice and neat and your answer produced x equals 1 and x equals 2. So you're just going to show the algebra on that problem. Uh, so, you know, subtract two points if you didn't get the answer for 14. Subtract uh, one-fourth of the points if you didn't get one of the answers, but you got the other one. Subtract one-fourth of the points for this one, so subtract one point for 15 if you wrote x equals 0, because that's not a solution. Because when you plug it in, something strange happens, and you should know. Um, let's see here. So as you can see, number 16 is a four-part problem. So if you didn't write the answer for any one of these, then you would write, then you would uh, subtract one half of a point for each one of these. Um, again, notice you have two possible sol solutions here. It depends on what point you're using. And um, if you wrote the equation of the line, but you didn't write the slope, then I'm going to have you uh, subtract uh, one half of the points for each part of that, that problem. Let's see. Again, you need to label all your axes for these problems, and if you don't, Subtract one-fourth of the points, so on and so forth. I don't need to go over this. I think you got the point. Um, there are two solutions for 18. If you didn't write one of the solutions, then you got to subtract half of the points for that. Or actually subtract one-fourth of the points. If you showed your work, then that's most of the, the, the part of the, uh, most of the things that you have to, most, most of what you have to do for that problem. Again, UND means undefined. So I just wrote an abbreviation. That's the same thing as undefined. The slope is undefined when the graph is vertical. Um, for number 20, please understand that the problem is only asking for the number of party hats. It's not asking for the number of balloons. If I remember correctly, that problem is balloons and party hats. So if you wrote the number of balloons, that's okay. You don't have to subtract any points, but we're only looking for the number of party hats. Um, let's see. Now, for number 24, things are going to get a little uh, weird for number 24. Again, we have an extraneous solution here. If you wrote that solution as part of uh, your answers, then you need to subtract one-fourth of the points for that part of the problem. Since it's a four-part problem, one-fourth of the points for that problem, that part, would be one-fourth of a point. And also, I want to mention, for part C, if you did not write zero, you don't have to subtract the points uh, any points for that. And the reason for that is it wants to know how, how long after the ball was released. So this technically would not really be an answer, but if you wrote it, that's okay. If you didn't write it, that's okay too. Even though I said there's two solutions, there's probably really only one solution because it wants to know how long after the ball was released. And uh, so you should have one solution. You can write it in either form for part A, and you should have two solutions for part B. If you only have one solution, Subtract uh, one fourth of a point. If you only if you uh, if you didn't write any solution, subtract uh, one half of a point. And uh, again, there's only one solution for part D. So part 25, or excuse me, question 25. It wants to know the uh, width and the length of the house. So if this is the house, nine would be the width and the length would be six and be sure to write your units. And I forgot to mention that. If you don't write your units, I want you to subtract, but uh, subtract one-fourth of the points for, for uh, every problem where you didn't write your units. So you should have seconds. You should have dollars per pound here. And you should have seconds here, and feet here, and yards here. So for every problem where you didn't write the units, subtract one-fourth of the points. Uh, for that problem. All right, so that's it. So go ahead and uh, grade your, your test. And when you come back, we'll talk about how to interpret interpret your, your grade. All right, we're back. If you scored 90 to 100, then that means you know the material really well. 
If you scored 80 to 89, that means you know the material, but you have a few minor things to work on, and so on and so forth. If you scored below a 70, that means 99% of the time you just didn't do all the homework leading up to the test completely and correctly, or you, and or you didn't uh, study for the test. You can't take a math exam without studying for the test and reviewing all the material because you're not going to remember what you went over uh, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks from, from, from now or, or four, four months from now. So uh, hopefully you did well on this test. If you didn't do, do well, then you're just going to have to go back and find practice problems because you can't go on to the next uh, course unless you understand this material. So just go back and do tons of practice problems. If you if you pass if, if you did well if you passed the exam if you got seventy or above I'm proud of you. So now we're going to talk about how to uh, interpret your score for the entire final uh, exam. I guess we don't really need to talk about it, but if you have a hundred if you add up those points, one hundred eighty to two hundred, that's an A. That means you did really well in the final, and so on and so forth. If you if you scored below one hundred and forty then uh, you just didn't do the homework leading up to the test completely and correctly, and you didn't study for the, for the test 99% 99, 99 of the time. There may be some students where they have uh, you know, certain things that they can't help, but 99% of the time, it's just that uh, you didn't do the work. You didn't do the work that was required. You can tell students this, but, they, but the natural tendency is to want to do the least amount of work that's required to pass uh, an exam, but unfortunately, that there, if you're not experienced when it comes to mathematics, your estimate for the, the least amount of work is going to be a lot less than the actual work you have to do, given that math is 10 times more difficult than people realize. So if you did well on your final uh, exam, your final test, good job, I'm proud of you. Um, if you didn't do well, then that probably means you're, you're uh, you may have to retake this course. We'll just see what what your final uh, grade is for the for the course. So, your final grade for the course that we're going to talk about that in the next class. So your homework for this class is to watch the next class, and uh, we'll talk about how to to uh, calculate your your grade for the entire course. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class.